What up besties, it's your girl Sheridan And I am back, back, back with yet another video Hey y'all, did y'all watch this week's episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta? If so, let's get into it We literally start where we left off Let me, before we get into this episode I feel like some of you guys are critiquing The Real Housewives of Atlanta very harshly and unfairly I don't think this season is a bust I don't think it's boring I don't think it's, like, lame. I think the first few episodes have been really good, except last week. And it's not that that was a, a bad episode. It's just the fact that Marlo is a menace to society. It was still all around entertaining, at least if you ask me. Tell me below, what do you think about The Real Housewives of Atlanta? It's not unbearable to the point where I don't want to watch it yet. Um, like... Love and marriage on real, but we gonna keep that on the low. Um, however, I think it was very entertaining. So y'all, let me know below. Um, my only gripe with this season is a Marlo and B the storyline between well Sheree. <laughs> I feel like Sheree is not being honest, um, especially when it comes to her storyline with Martell, um, and so. We're clearly not seeing him right now in the season. So I'm moving on. Um, I don't think that storyline was real at all whatsoever. And so that made it less enjoyable. Um, but yeah, these ladies are clocking into work. So I don't know why so many people, or not really so many people, a few key people are saying that, that you know the show is boring or whatever i don't think so what do y'all think anyway this episode we see marlo and uh monietta are going back and forth and i literally don't understand why marlo is just obsessed with arguing that's it that's all um marlo then proceeds to try and close the door in monietta's face and i wish i could say i was above fighting her um, but when I tell you, if she would have closed that door in my face, I'm not sure if y'all remember the show Flavor of Love and remember when uh, Pumpkin got eliminated and her and uh, New York were going back and forth and Pumpkin said she was going to slap uh, New York and excuse me for pronouncing the M in Pumpkin. Her name was Pumpkin. Okay. And she said she was going to slap her and New York said slap me B okay and that voice slap me B and then Punkin um, spit on her that shove that um, New York gave to Punkin that made you literally see Punkin's whole um, understanding flash before her eyes her whole life right so she was rattled real bad she shoved that girl clear across the room you see that um that's what i would have done to marlo i would have shoved her in her back she would have flown from the lobby to the alley in the back playing with me like that i i'm sorry jesus i'm sorry mary and joseph but ain't no way marlo would play with me like that anyway Courtney, um, now while Marlo the other week was saying that Monietta is uh, Kenya's emotional support human, Courtney is her emotional support dog, and can't nobody tell me any different. So Monietta calls Kenya, and she just feels like Kenya left her with the wolves, and she did. <laughs> And so Sheree is with her and they're trying to talk or whatever. And Kenya is just like, listen, I'm over it. You know, for the girls who are not my core group of friends, like, just tell them they could leave. Like, I would feel better if they could leave because obviously they didn't want to be there. They were complaining, you know, each step of the way. Now, what I will say is Kenya could have done a better job hosting so if you didn't want to tell the ladies exactly what they were doing i would have given hints or said you know prepare outfits for this this and that now uh when it came to the game i totally understood her not telling the ladies she didn't have to y'all were going to a game like like i didn't feel like she had to tell them that she was performing that could have been a good surprise but whatever um 
Um, Sonia feels like Kenya is a worse host than she was in Jamaica. And um, I really don't care how Sonia feels. Marlo says she's angry and she let that she let Kenya take control of her. Girl, what? <laughs> Kenya literally didn't do anything to Marlo. Like Marlo is delusional. I'm I'm about to ask, are you on drugs? Like, girl, that lady did not do anything to you. And yes, Kenya has been known to start stuff with people in the past, but this this season she has done nothing to you. It's like you're proacting rather than reacting. Like you're trying to. Um, say she can't have control over me or whatever. It's the fact that she already does. And it's in your mind. You're contemplating her trying to control you. And I want to know what that is. I don't know. Like, you're weird. And I think it's because you're so used to playing a friend of or a B character that you don't know how to step into main character role. So, like, when Marlo first came on this show, she was coming to us um, really to be a dig, a human dig for Nene, right? So, she was coming because Nene was dating Charles Grant and allegedly Marlo was dating a man at the same time. And so, they were trying to expose that. Well, that didn't work. She and Nene end up becoming cool and and then she becomes Nini's attack dog, right? And Nini dropped her um, because, uh, uh, what's the girl name? Kenya started becoming friends with her. She and Kenya hung out, whatever, whatever. Kenya didn't invite her to one, one event. Marlo lost her mind. She's back on Team Nini. And the two have been clashing ever since. And Marlo can blame everything that happens in her adult life on um, her childhood trauma if she wants to. But let me tell you something. I'm not falling for it. You're 50. You're 50. We're not about to sit up here and keep blaming everything on a foster home. You're 175 years old. You're 967 years old. Like, girl, stop it. Stop it. And so I feel like she... Um, assumes that Kenya is about to try her and so she shows out and it's like girl you're insecure you're insecure for someone who doesn't like Kenya you sure are like vying for her attention and approval and it's so bizarre because let me tell you something if I don't like somebody I don't give a darn what you think about what I'm doing but Marlo really looks up to Kenya and that's okay just say that, girl. Just say that. Because it's, it's giving weird. It's giving bizarre. So, anyway. Um, Sonya tells us she feels angry. And she met. She was hurt that Kenya told her she could leave. But, Sonya, she didn't just tell you you could leave. And she wasn't saying it like, girl, you can go. She was saying, like, you were talking about I have a four-hour drive. Blah, blah, blah. And Kenya just said, don't come back because the weekend was ruined. So she was telling everybody besides her close friends, like, y'all can leave because y'all was mad, upset with her. Anyway, um, Monetta is talking about calling Ray Ray and them to get Marlo. And she quote, quoting to, she's quoting Tupac, talking about, I ain't a killer, but don't push me. I said, ooh. <laughs> It do look like Monetta got goons, though. So, Marlo, watch your back, baby. But I don't know. Monetta, maybe not call the goons. Well, you would have to with Marlo because she known to slash your face on five. So, that baby ain't scared of going to jail. Anyway, um, um, what's the girl named Marlo comes over and she's hearing Monetta quote Tupac and she's laughing boisterously and belligerently and she's like, ah, 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 ah. Like, Marlo got to grow up at some point in her life. You're 9,076 years old. Like, grow up. So, anyway, we see Drew leaving the hospital, and she's wearing a mask because she had the flu. Uh, we then see Todd is presenting Candy with his movie stuff and talking to her about that. But is she paying full attention? No, because she's focused on her dreams, hopes, and ambitions. She's taking texts and all that. And so they start talking about Mama Joyce. And um, I just wanted to let y'all know that it's never going to change. Mama Joyce has been positively rewarded 
for acting a fool on this show. And so whenever she hits a Bravo stage, she's going to act a fool. Period. Point blank. So Kenya is calling the ambulance. Uh, because she's having pain in her left arm and in her chest. And I said, girl, is you having a heart attack? Oh, my God. Fix it, Keyonce. So, anyway, Sheree calls the ladies into her room. And she lets them know that this morning she basically had a bunch of, um, heard a bunch of chaos outside her door. And it's because the M EMTs have come to get Kenya. And so, the ladies are so concerned now. And they FaceTime um kenya and marlo is trying to check on her kenya lets us know that king um she has had 102 fever and um some chest pain and then y'all marlo proceeds to grab hands with the other ladies and pray i'm just glad kenya made it through the night because ain't no way the devil finna pray for me no way ain't no way so anyway, Monietta breaks down crying while seeing Kenya in the hospital because her mom had just passed away. So um, like I told y'all, Marlo prayed with the ladies and um, ain't no way Marlo should have led that prayer. If you don't like me, don't lead the prayer. Don't lead the prayer. I, Sheree or Monietta should have said, you know what, I'll pray. Because girl, what? Anyway, Sheree buys Uber Eats for the ladies because the kitchen at the Hilton Garden Inn or whatever they stand is closed. I feel like it's more of a Hampton Inn. Uh huh. But anyway, King Marla says that she tries to send Kenya's flowers, but they discharge her quick, fast, and in a hurry. And I just felt like even that was a dig. So whatever. Um, and mind you, that was right after right. Right after Sheree has said that Kenya's assistant said that they kept her, you know, for testing. So, child, whatever. Anyway, Monietta shows the ladies the halftime show she choreographed. And they all agreed to be cordial. And we know that's not even going to last till the next episode. Courtney asked Sheree about Drew. And Sheree claims that Drew lied about getting she by Sheree confiscated after the reunion. And I just have a question for you besties. Do y'all care? Because I don't. Anyway, Sanya says that her feelings were hurt. That Kenya says she could go home. Blah, blah, blah. And that she thinks that Kenya is upset that she's friends with Marlo. Girl, no one cares. Like, I think you being that tight with Marlo and always trying to defend her says something about you being more like a follower than then she should be upset about that. That's that's what I think. I think Kenya knows that you are a follower. And that's what you give. That's what you've been given. So anyway, Sheree brings a care package to Moore Manor. And Kenya ended up with the flu. So the flu is just going around in Atlanta. And honestly, the flu is dangerous. Like, you could literally die from having the flu. So... I'm glad that Keyonce is doing better. They talk about the fact that Marlo wants Kenya's approval. And I said, oh, y'all know that? That's good to know that y'all have clocked it. But Sheree, you're fake. <laughs> Sheree is so fake. So they were talking about the fact that Ken uh, Marlo had banged on Kenya's door and kicked it or whatever. Sheree never bring up the fact that she was knocking on the door too and being weird. Norm Brooklyn was in there like, Sheree is so fake. All this stuff you're talking about, it's like she looks for your approval. What well, girl, you were searching for Nini's? Oh, okay. Anyway, Sheree and Kenya talk about fibroids and we find out that Kenya has had three or four surgeries for fibroids herself. So Kenya dealt with it. Cynthia dealt with it. Now Sheree, let's talk about black women and fibroids. Like I know that the statistics are staggering, but what exactly is going on and what is causing us to have fibroids? Or I say them because I'm not speaking that over my life in the name of the Lord. Like, what is going on? Sheree then plays a joke and says she was expecting, and it was a cute little moment. Brooklyn came in from karate sh uh, class and hugs and loves on her mommy. And Brooklyn looks like Kenya's grandmother, Doris, and her father. It's so cute. And so she's showing us her karate moves, and I thought that was real nice. Candy meets up with Mama Joyce in her Donna Summers wig and they talk about BravoCon. Mama Joyce says that every time 
child. They ask her about Todd or the kind of man she wants for her daughter. She going to tell the truth. My issue with you, Mama Joyce, is your truth is not corroborating with the truth anymore. At this point, Todd and Candy have been married almost 10 years. If he's a user, if he's there for the clout, that would have ran out by now, honey. You can only keep up a facade for so long. If he if he is a clout chaser, he's the world's dumbest clout chaser. He ain't even kill her from the insurance money or nothing. Like, <laughs> like no. Good night, Mama Joyce. So anyway, she says that every time she comes over, Todd is asleep. Girl, that man is awake and working. He's wide awake and avoiding you. She said that Ty was humble when they first met, and now he's like George Jefferson. Girl, what? <laughs> what? Child, she said, now mind you, Ty put money in Mama Joy's pocket by way of OLG. Y'all know that was his idea, right? So he put together OLG, and you're one of the faces of that. That's where money in your pocket. Hmm. Anyway, so uh, she says that Ace is six years old, and Todd doesn't teach him how to take out the trash. He doesn't take out the trash. She feels that any man should take out the trash. And I would agree with you in a working class family. These Negroes got employees. I'm sure Don Juan, uh, Jamie, A1, one of them is out there taking that garbage out. Why would Ty have to do that if he paid people to do it? Anyway, um, Mama Joyce is silly. She's just silly. And so she agrees to go to counseling. And I want to know if Ty is going to counseling with them because if I was Ty, I would not. I will not. And we don't need counseling to know that your mama is a fool if she doesn't like anybody that has come into your life. When has we seen mama, this is not the first relationship we have seen Candy in. And we have not seen Mama Joyce like any one of those men. And they were bosses. Let that seep in. Anyway, can Kenya meets up with Sheree and Drew to do a vitamin drip and hash things out. Drew claims that she didn't say everything was confiscated that she got by she by Sheree, but the producers show us she literally said everything. And she just wanted the she by Sheree bag, and we found out that Sheree said that that was her personal bag. So Drew did the interview that Sheree had a gripe about. So Sheree... Sheree um, and Drew made up, Sheree called her and basically was thanking her for starting this platform and whatever and setting the tone for her to be successful. And next thing we know, um, Drew is doing an interview where she's saying, y'all want the tea, everything was confiscated, blah, 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 blah. And so Sheree it was upset by that, like, why, how come we made up and then you go on this press tour talking crazy about me Sheree um was upset rightfully so but then Drew lets us know that she did the interview before that conversation and they have this heart to heart and I, I'm just I'm team Sheree with this one Drew you just gotta stop lying it's weird bro you're weird you're too old for that foolishness Ugh. anyway uh Drew tells us the story again about how Marlo attacked her two episodes ago and talks about Marlo weaponizing her nephew's death to spite Candy. And we are going to pick up next week with um, Kenya calling um, Candy. Now, man, y'all, she, Marlo is saying that she met, um, that her nephew met this person that killed him at, OLG. First of all, it was Blaze. And secondly, the one who killed him never worked for Candy and Ty. Secondly, Marlo, I don't think you were close with this nephew because last week's episode, you said that Crystal grew up with the nephew and that's why she was so emotional. But Marlo, we know you did not grow up with Crystal. So I don't think you was close to this nephew. I think um, that even the fact that you had to ask um, Candy, do you know uh, 
whatever the nephew's name is, and she responded and said, that was my nephew or whatever. I feel like you weren't that close with him. You waited a few years to bring this up, all for a storyline. I think you are weaponizing Crystal's hurt because I don't think you that told up about it. I think it's a messed up situation. It's horrible, um, but you ain't grow up with this man. So this is weird. Also, the chef coat he had on from the obituary, Don Juan tells us that that's not even uh, OLG or a uh, Blaze background. So that's inaccurate information. So Marlo, before you start weaponizing trauma, sweetheart, at least, I mean, the least you could have done was gotten the facts right. So, anyway, thank y'all so much for listening and watching my video. If you could, please thumbs up the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and we'll get back into more details later. Life with Sheridan here, signing off. Bye.